So welcome all of you to the values workshop on abundance. So let's take a moment in silence and reflect on this virtue of abundance. What is abundance for me? I know about the external abundance in nature. Similarly, inside of me, within me, I have a lot of internal abundance. To name, abundance of virtues and powers. So from today's workshop, let me try to explore how I can tap into this internal abundance of mine, which I probably wasn't aware of for a long, long time. And as I go through the exercises today for the first 45 minutes or so, let me try to build on this internal abundance which I have, the treasure store which is there within me. So with this, let us just move further. So as you can see, these are the workshops we have been conducting since December 2020. We recently finished the 60th, the Diamond Jubilee <clears throat> episode and workshop on greatness. And here we are today with <clears throat> abundance, excuse me. So we'll be having Brother Yogesh Sharda joining from Turkey soon. After almost one hour of the first reflective exercises of the first hour, so as always, we have our facilitators with us, Sister Anu joining from the West Coast of Canada, myself and Sister Shruti who shall be joining a bit later. So this video is slightly uh, lengthy, I must say around four and a half to five minutes. So I'll try to skip a few things which are repetitive. So just look at the video and see, do you have any hints or anything which you are picking up? related to abundance and just play. Thank you. 
So let me just stop sharing the screen here. We have almost played around three minutes. Quite a few things you'll have seen. A teaser for the brain. So if you can start sharing in the chat box, let me see there are some responses. I hope there is something. Okay, not really about. So if you want to quickly share in the chat box, we have exactly five minutes for you all to share in the chat box. For the icebreaker video, we usually prefer not to do oral sharings because it takes away the time. So if you want to quickly mention what insight did you gain from that three minute quick video? I know some have joined a bit late, but well, something was there. What was that sand clock signifying? Every human being had a sand clock sort of thing. Something was happening in the night there, and then there was some conflict. They were fighting. Oh, so you need to tease your brains today for trying to interpret what it was. Something related to internal abundance. Because we really can't show the subtle internal abundance. It was shown beautifully as a sign clock that how we are depleted inside. Right. So it's, I think I'm only speaking as insights gained. <laughs> it's for you all to speak. We have three more minutes. If someone wants to uh, quickly do an oral sharing, you can please unmute and speak. A lot to learn from this video. Any similarities between uh, regular spiritual practitioners and this video? Some hints I'm trying to give you. Right. Speech is silver, silence is golden. That's what you're trying to teach me today. Right. Yeah. So Sister Balvinder is saying, fantastic. Thank you for at least starting. That whoever is enlightened is abundant, becomes the leader, never sleeps, wow, and gains unlimited strength to stand alone and wants to enlighten others, but definitely faces opposition. I must say, fantastic, Patrick. I mean, you really put it up very well. And you have really point, got all those points. So really, thanks a lot. Thank you, Sister for setting the ball rolling for the stage. Two more minutes, and then we'll move on to the first activity. Uh, Brother Manuel has interpreted that when we are loaded, we will gladly do what we have to do. Yes, beautiful. And when I say loaded, it means filled inside, filled from inside, right? Not in the sense of being overloaded with something. It's the filling inside. Hope that's right, what I'm saying, Brother Manuel. Yeah. And uh, anyone else wants to share? Quick oral sharings. We're all displaying abundance today. No one wants to speak. Sister Lata is saying, the one who is abundant always has something to give, always in every situation. Yes, correct. Even if they are drained and tired from outside, but they keep giving. Yeah, very good. And as rightly pointed out previously by Sister Balvinder, that even if there is conflict and they are not really acknowledged, people may, on the contrary, try to damage them, discard them, but they still don't stop giving. Right, Sister Balvinder again says, when it's you, it is the supreme being. He's awakened us like $1 million lottery, right? Okay, great. Fine, so I think uh, I don't want to drag it further. So thank you for your sharings. And I think, uh, yeah, I mean, though all of you haven't shared, but I mean, the gist is understood. So with this, I'll request Sister Anu to go on to the first activity. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I think that is a good, uh, um, that, uh, the character, uh, uh, okay, so took out to donate to others and nourish them for the next day. I think as you donate, you nourish. There are so many, brother, it has come now. Param says, giver is always giver, no matter what. It's the net nature of pure soul. Gita Gupta says, the shine is in the diamond inside the box, not outside. 
beautiful, um, really deeper, <laughs> insightful uh, thoughts. So yes, let's move to our first exercise in this exploration on abundance. So what we'll start with is you know, reflecting on abundance around us, the outside. And as it says that pause for a minute in silence and reflect on what the nature outside, that is the external abundance around us, um, mother nature, definitely that comes to our mind, but also I would say people. Um, you know, that is also the external abundance, what they give us so that that decorates our inner resources. So the internal abundance comes from that. Um, and both external and internal are connected as well as that constitute our existence. I think Turkish, you, you have to hold on sister. Maybe you were out. You have to enter to the room. So don't translate. So I hope it is clear. Just pause for a minute in silence and reflect around you, the external abundance you see, and that gives you the abundance inside. So connect the dots and if you can see the external abundance that forms the internal abundance and your whole existence. Let's just take one minute for this reflection in silence and then we'll take Que droga. Okay, so I'm sure you have gathered your thoughts and you have recognized the external abundance as well as the internal abundance. We would love to hear from you. Okay. I will request everybody to mute themselves if they're not speaking. So Angela, you'd like to share? Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, nature, Good sister. Gives, please go yes, ahead. Yes. Nature gives lots of abundance us. Yes. Sunshine, moon, moonshine, and uh, weather, rain, snow. This caused the abundance from the earth to us. Amazing, yes, beautiful. That, that's what we notice every day and that fills our heart, abundance we feel in our life. Thank you, thank you, Golden. Uh, okay, uh, I am I am counting if you want, okay? Is it okay? May I say, may I yeah. continue? Yeah, continue, continue okay. for okay. a minute. Yeah, this cause, this cause happiness, peace and love inside. Uh, out of uh, inside of us, okay? And also if we uh, meet anyone uh, while working on the street or in the park, if someone uh, smile to us, say hello and 
uh, look uh, very uh, sweet way. And also this caused abundance to us. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. I loved it. Yeah, that's, um, you said it right for me. That abundance comes in many different ways. So Juja uh, says in the chart that nature gives us for sure assurance of abundance, not only in quantity, but variety from different um, resources, but that love and peace, that joy that we feel inside. Thank you, Gildan. Yes, uh, Silan brother, you want to share? Yes, uh, um, you know, the feeling of having abundance comes from a consciousness of abundance, uh, to be aware that there's plenty of people around us. And uh, I know that the more I, I look at the outside and I appreciate nature and its abundance in terms of food and fruit and all the wonderful things, in fact, nature is overabundant in its giving. And uh, for us to have that kind of consciousness, yes, uh, this is what I can do for myself as well. You know, I can give myself, have that abundance from within me, but also from others around me. That, uh, over the years, I've taken a lot from others, from others around me who have an abundance of knowledge, abundance of experience. And that has helped me in my journey as well, in my spiritual journey. So there's been definitely uh, a change with this kind of consciousness of abundance. As long as we don't see that, then we're not going to experience it. And that's my view. Well, that we notice it, but do we see it? And do we learn? Uh, when we give again, we feel that abundance. We think Patma, sister, wanted it there. I think okay. you're, yes. So, um, yeah, there's just a small, you know, um, observation that one is, um, you know, takes the time to be in tune with nature then uh, you you uh, observe that um, how um, you know the, the the fauna and flora and all coexist you know that um, and that is why there is so much of abundance and harmony and you know the peace that when uh, that exists there in uh, abundance so when we observe it um, we feel it you know we feel the peace and so the internal feeling is that we want, I, we should uh, emulate nature and so that we can coexist and also give off that abundance and peace and so on. A sense of coexistence um, with abundance and sharing, noticing, being grateful and sharing. Thank you so much. Anybody else who would like to share some? New participants or other people who may be inspired to share, you can please. sure. Yes. Sorry, <laughs> could I we know your share. name, sister? Yes, my my name is Vidya Tomar, and I live in Minnesota. And it's very cold, gray, and windy in this state in the winter. So I get lovely. Um, inspirational text from sister Vijay who lives in New York and that is such an abundance in my life I am inspired I feel joy when I read those words so I just wanted to share that that one person and one word can change my attitude and feel so much abundance in my life joy peace love happiness which I share with other people when I'm working in the nursing homes, auditing and inspecting the cares that our elderly individuals are getting in the state of Minnesota. So I am very thankful and I feel such an abundance when I read her inspirational text that she sends to me every day. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you, Vidya, for sharing. And uh, that's amazing. Minnesota. Uh, is something interesting for all of us, I think, <laughs> from the movie Inside Out, I would say. But yeah, great. Keep sharing in that healthcare sector is great. Thank you. Rehana, you want to share, sister? Yes. Uh, there are many things in nature uh, from which we can learn, like 
um, the things come free, like sunlight or soil or air. Everything comes for free and it's abundant. Okay, but there are some things which shouldn't be abundant. So we should identify which has to be abundant and which shouldn't be abundant. Like we saw in the video, uh, mm -hmm. when we when we face the opposition, okay, we, we need to learn to restrain ourselves, what to give and how much to give. Okay, whatever has to be in, uh, given in abundance, that has to be given in abundance, otherwise life can't be sustained. Whatever there has to be a restraint, there has to be a restraint. And we should identify what exactly, okay, uh, we <laughs> need to be specific as to what we want in abundance. If we, because we don't uh, get what we want, we get what we are or what we resonate, okay. So that is one thing, and this is one thing uh, that we have to have that identification. We need to, you know, really uh, identify which has to be in abundance and which shouldn't be. Right. Yeah. Usually we refer abundance as that positive thing, that uplifting things, but you're right. We need to know, we have to have that eyes of wisdom to identify, recognize, and close the door for something that is too much not really abundance for my in, in, inner world. Thank you so much, Rehna. Um, I think we can take one more sharing. Um, somebody uh, would like to share, anyone? Hi. Smita. Yeah, I'm Smita Patel from Potomac, Maryland, which is in USA. And uh, I also like, one sister mentioned, the blessings we get from the center um, is something to look forward to every day. And that's abundance. And you're talking about the nature. I feel the five elements, you know, the water, right? The sun, the moon, the fire, all are so essential for our wellness. And uh, like in, you know, if there is a weather outside, right? If it's a rain, rain also gives us so much peace, calmness. Right, it helps with uh, even our meditation. People meditate so much differently when it's uh, cloudy and rainy weather. So some of my, um, you know, students or everyone will say, "Oh my God, I cannot do anything outside. It's so rainy." I say, "But you know, make sunshine inside your home and within you, mm -hmm. right? Because that's abundance. Just the way your thought. Just we have our thoughts. If we keep positive thoughts, gives positive words and good actions." and deeds. And I always say, nature is the only healing factor. You know, if someone is feeling anxious or sad, you know, you look at the sun. I know sometimes if it's sunny outside, people put curtains, right? But sun sh still shines, right? So nature is giving. Nature is so abundant. So that's why I like to give. And giving is not treasure. Giving of your time, your talent, your knowledge is by do, you do give knowledge to someone, you get abundance. Just like, you know, you give treasure, it comes hundredfolds. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Yeah, beautifully uh, shared that you give. And I loved it, how you connected that the nature, what it is giving, how it makes you feel. The raindrops gives you peace. And again, uh, identifying those, recognizing and to give. That's what abundance is. So, Thank you, everyone, very much. I think we'll move, but I think I'll read the last one, the Marilja, Marilza uh, from Portugal, I think. External abundance, healthy food, sunlight, the singing of animals, flowering plants, water, air, earth, inner abundance, self sovereignty, self confidence, the clarity of being a soul. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And I think uh, I would request uh, Deepak Bhai to show uh, that we have written up the sharings that we will share with all of you in the review material afterwards. Right. It was beautiful. Think, uh, we, we won't read all this because we don't have sure. time for Yeah, okay. yeah. We pretty much uh, explained throughout. So. We'll be sharing it with all. So let's move on to the next. Uh, over to you, Manoj Padra. Yeah, thank you. Fine. So I have learned a lot about abundance from you all, very enlightened souls, because each, each one's perspective is so different, but it's really enlightening. So let's, as always, 
go in this meditation mode before we go into the action planning of how to reflect abundance or inculcate abundance in my nature at work or at my personal space. So let's uh, I'll share the screen and let's get this 3D effect. So take a few deep breaths in and out. And relax your mind. And as you look at the nature in front of you, the beautiful flowing river, the beautiful mountains, and the blue skies with the clouds above, you can see the nature outside is so abundant. And looking at that, you get a feeling of being in the unlimited. As we say in Hindi, Behat ki bhavni. The feeling of being unlimited. And you can see the nature outside is just forgiving and giving and giving. So now let me pause for a while and try to look at my inner nature, a point to ponder upon that what is it that constitutes my inner nature as alluded to before in the starting meditation. It is all the resources which I have. And the two basic ones are my inner virtues and inner power. So let me go inside, become introverted for the next few minutes. And try to look at these abundant inner treasure which I have. And which I haven't really got a chance to look upon in my journey before coming into spirituality. So let me try to look at these And as people have been sharing, just looking at these makes me feel so excited and elated. My inner store of value, peace, positivity, love, etc. And the inner treasure of powers make me feel so full of this inner abundance <clears throat> take me into the unlimited whereby I now see all the souls in the world as my extended family and I relate to each one of them on that level and with this beautiful insight of the last few minutes after having filled myself the apron of me inside being full with the treasure from the divine let me now look at my week ahead of how i can use this treasure this abundance inside into my day-to-day -day actions and behavior. So with this, I will stop sharing the screen. So uh, over to you, Sister Annie. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Manoj brother, for the beautiful, you know, again, the meditation, the reflection. So let's stay in that space of abundance as we move to our action planning, the next exercise. So, you know, now reflect on the practical ways or methods that you want to adapt from now on. There's something more attention you will bring or make some changes that can help you to inculcate the internal abundance in your personal and professional life. This is the action planning exercise. Everyone will have their own that will appeal to them. So what would you do that can help you to inculcate the internal abundance? What new would you want to bring to your daily schedule? So let's take one minute to reflect on it. I'm sure you all have, you know, identified some ways or methods that you will bring in to your daily schedule. So I'll stop. I know there have been great sharings and very deep insight so far. So we would love to hear from you. What is the new action plan to enhance the internal abundance would like to share i see sister lata and bridgepal bhai were pain painting from the he's already unmuted bridgepal bhai okay so yeah. should i speak yes please go ahead uh, this abundance you see is not only money so it is necessary to create the thoughts of abundance and remove scarcity from your dictionary. Scarcity is lack of faith. Have faith, and you know faith can move the mountains. Abundance is self-respect. Abundance is peace. For the internal abundance, you raise your consciousness and connect with the Supreme, gain powers from Him, and that powers which you attain, that is the abundance. And the trees and the mountains and the rivers which we have seen, I remember one Doha, Vriksh kabina phal chake nadi na sache neer, par marat ke karn sadhum dhara sarir. That is, trees do not eat the fruits, rivers do not drink water, pure noble souls take but to serve the humanity. So be with nature, be at peace, be happy, be a giver, and feel abundance. Om Shanti. Thank you. Thank you, Bridge. 
well, brother, it's beautiful sharing. Um, so taking from the source and giving selflessly um, and recognizing that true abundance inside, self-respect, peace, beautiful sharing. Thank you. Yes, Lata, would you like to share now? Yeah, Om uh, Shanti. Uh, so uh, my sharing is actually more or less the same. I'll finish quickly. So one thing that I feel is that uh, we become abundant only by giving and giving and giving. We never get deprived of it. The more we give, the more we get. And at the same time, the other thing is to connect us from the connect ourselves from the one who is the tower all the time, the eternal source of happiness and ocean of peace and purity. So we keep receiving and we keep giving. So let the chain go on and. Uh, so by giving, I think that it is a value that, that we can inculcate. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. You, Keep the chain of giving, uh, receiving and giving. And also Bridge Palma said that uh, thoughts, abundance in the thoughts, positive, powerful, connecting with the Supreme. And Dr. Swati in the chat says, nature is the most powerful to create positive impact. Take the abundance from the nature. Um, uh, Portuguese uh, brother Manuel uh, um, translated that number one to see life through the eyes of love number two together with the divine to share everything that I accumulate inside of me I love the word um, the eyes of love eyes of love and respect for everyone irrespective of what we see outside because we all are abundant souls inside Gita Gupta says, attitude of gratitude in all areas of life. Life is so rich with all the beauties inside. Yeah, Marilza. Um, I think Marilza says, constancy in the power of introversion, going inside, reviewing values, being courageous when seeing your weaknesses, and finally, with the support of the Supreme, keeping luminous thoughts, immersing purity. Beautifully written. Thank you so much. There's so many. I, I, I can read more, but maybe we can take some verbal uh, sharings. Um, Om Shanti Devi, can I, can I share now? <laughs> yes, essentially. Yes, Vijay, brother. Why not? Definitely will listen. Om Shanti, my dear brothers and sisters, please accept greetings of love, peace, and happiness. Abundance. Now we know that each soul, when it comes on this earth, has abundance. But somehow or the other, these are being hidden due to our birth cycle, and they are not now visibly seen. But we see the nature, sun gives, what earth gives, trees gives, air gives, everybody is giving because this is a truth that by giving only, you become happy. By giving only, you get back. So it was not outside nature, which was a giver. It was our internal treasures that we were so rich. We were so pure. We were so inside purity, peace, love, happiness. These eternal values of ours now comes to a light when we get with the supreme power and that supreme power helps us to overcome our weaknesses and that internal treasures come out right. when these internal treasures come out the nature also becomes giving it is we souls which make the nature abundant but somehow the other nature is still giving but we because of our soul power is weakened battery is less it is to be charged and then we give to the original giver positions. Yeah. So we are givers, go on giving, whatever situation it may be, at least give a good smile, give peace and love and happiness, give good thoughts of Shubh Bhavana, Shubh Kamana, best wishes to all, and you will become happy and environment will come, become happy. Om Shanti. Thank you. So we are the awakened powers, the spirits. So as we recognize and express it, everything is filled with abundance and giving. 
I see some new faces. Maybe I will call up on some if they don't mind. I think maybe Emilio, uh, you are very concentrated read writing. Would you like to share? Anyone else? Sevda, Koken? Patricia? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sure. Sister Param, you ready? You want to share your thoughts? Om Shanti, sister. So I will say like uh, we are getting a lot from supreme power and but if we don't let spread that peace and love in the universe so uh, we should just let it flow we should not hold anything so this is like uh, what i realized sometimes we seek like if we do something and we seek something in return oh i should get it back like even just thanks word so i think we should not uh, expect anything in return so let it flow Whatever we are getting from Supreme, should it flow smoothly without holding anything, all the qualities and all the powers. So that's what I got from this session. Thank you. Om Shanti. Thank you. Don't hold, but share selflessly. And I think like uh, Vijay brothers shared that if there is any weakness, you have to overcome by connecting with the Supreme. Thank you so much, Param. Nanit? you like to share yeah my plan is to move from internal abundance to eternal abundance wow thank you amazing so internal abundance to eternal so that is our truth we hold within so moving to that uh, amazing sharings and as the exercise um wanted us to look at what is that missing in me that I'm not being abundant and we want to bring it out through particular methods so I'm sure we all have the plan that we will implement this week um Agrita do you like to share I think it's a different page okay no worries Scoop. <laughs> okay. So maybe we'll just take this last sharing yeah. and then yeah. I'm not sure if she likes wants Om to Shanti. share. Yes. Om Shanti. Good morning to everyone. Yes, Nature me. is just like mother who uh, know how to serve us without any expectations in return. And we should learn how to uh, regard and respect the nature for this and not to take nature for granted now and this is time for us to learn how we should serve others without any expectation that's it Om Shanti thank you thank you so much and actually there is elaborated sharing on the chart so I would request Deepak brother to maybe put it all in the uh, sharing slides that we'll share with all Maybe you can just show it quickly, but I think uh, look forward to receiving it and uh, beautiful sharings and um, also reflect on them and bring it practically to your life, I would say. So I think I loved it that I'm moving from internal to eternal as most of us shared that we have it all within us. And I think we should just give it as we know, you know, giving is receiving as somebody said that you feel abundant when the chain continues of receiving and giving receiving from the source and constantly sharing just like the nature does so i think i will wrap up here um, and before um, we move to the next i would like to uh, share with all that if you haven't shared your contact info you can send it to vidhi or myself or in the uh, everyone chat because we'll send you all these sharings and uh, you know content of the workshop to you after the work. Thank you, everyone. So I hand it over to Brother Manoj. Thank you so much, all of you. So let's move into eternal abundance.
And yes, let me just share one thing with you all that these workshops were inspired by Vihasa, Values in Healthcare, a Spiritual Approach, which is a program which is being conducted by the Janaki Foundation, which is a spirituality for healthcare. And as we speak, this is the 25th year they are celebrating. So it is, I think, from 1998, it has been into existence from the UK to be specific London. And we are having, you know, the pandemic has really taught us a lot of new things. So all of us have tried to move to the Zoom online workshops. So online Vihasa has also started now in a big way. And I would want to share uh, this information for you all so you can just join us so we have this global launch of the vihasa online project as you can see vihasa stands for values in healthcare a spiritual approach it's all about uh, how to share care and inspire values and i'm sure that's what we are doing on our platform as well but here in values in healthcare, a spiritual approach, there are specific modules, eight modules, which I'm sure quite a few people know about it. So if you want to know in detail, if you can please also attend the global online launch of this, it is there tomorrow for India time, it would be 8.30 p.m. And for the East Coast, it is 10 a.m., West Coast is 7 a.m. And the British summer time starts from tomorrow. So the ones who are joining from UK, if any from UK and Europe, uh, mind well, it's at 3 p.m. UK time, the British summer time, and 4 p.m. Europe time. So if you want to be a part of this grand celebration, which is actually commemorating the Janaki Foundation's 25th anniversary, and also it reminds me after two days, it is Dadi Janaki's third anniversary, which we are celebrating of her becoming Avyat. So it is also in one way a very fond remembrance of that special soul which all of us have taken a lot of sustenance from i'm sure you agree to that so if you all want to join just uh, i have shared that link uh, maybe i think in the review materials when we send we will just send a snapshot of that as well I, or in the chat box if sister anu or he can just share that uh, link we can put snap. the zoom link and the that's zoom link you... can be put so if you all want to just quickly snap take a snapshot or write it down in your diary so you all can join tomorrow at those times okay so let me just move on to our values workshop business now. So I'll just share the screen. Brother Yogesh will be joining with us shortly in the next 15 minutes. So we had Sister Aruna with us last time, all about abundance. She spoke a lot. So she said that it is a feeling. Abundance actually is a feeling. I really don't need to just have too many things from outside to say that I'm abundant. No, it's basically an internal feeling. And I really love the sharing. It's eternal feeling, forever, eternal. And for that, you need to have a rich spirit. Though you may be a pauper outside, physically, financially, socioeconomically, but your spirit matters, the richness of the spirit. And that's what she said, that if you have a lot within yourself, then you can give it to others. And this is the way how abundance leads to generosity. So abundance is sort of, I must say, something fullness inside. But how does it radiate outside? How does it show in the form of my generous nature? And for this, we need to create the consciousness of this feeling that I will have enough. I actually already have enough of whatever is needed for me. I have enough. And this way, then the attitude of gratitude comes in and it builds trust and faith. These two things also really make our uh, spirituality more grounded. And the more and more we are built in trust and faith, <clears throat> we become more and more strong. She also mentioned that there's a fine balance between abundance and economizing, which means economy of not only your resources, but economy of your thoughts, your words, your actions. So as in Hindi, we say, Kam kharch bala nashin, which means I need to really economize on what I'm doing. In whatever little resources I have, I must be able to do the maximum. And the more we give, as we have been discussing since the meditation, which we did 15 minutes ago, the more we will have. And this... Uh, particularly goes to for all the virtues and powers. Then she said, how to build this abundance in the consciousness? Though I don't have anything from outside a lot, physically, 
financially, but how is how will I know that my consciousness is abundant? So she said the language of an abundant person is highly, highly positive. So a person is how he feels. When you have don't have something inside, you have this security insecurity that I probably whatever I have, I will lose. So there's a fear of losing something. So we definitely have and we create this thought of here, yeah, it's highly negative. So let's try to, that's what she said, be positive. And then we can radiate this energy to others as well. And very important, be mindful of what I am doing. Because what I do, others will just copy. So I would like to share that at Brahma Kumaris, in our spiritual teachings, we are taught this. In Hindi we say, Jo karam mein karunga, mujhe dek aur karenge. So whatever actions I perform, people will definitely simulate that and do that. So let me just try to give them, in my interactions, pure feelings all the time. And let me radiate positivity because abundance in consciousness is nothing but my positive approach in life. Now, once I know what is there in my consciousness, how do I sustain it? So I really need to be very, very careful and not allow negativity to enter into me. That's what it was all about. And then once I am in my state of mind, which is highly positive, then my life actually becomes... Uh, I must say a server. I become a server. The purpose of my life changes and then I would be really become an instrument of God and God will definitely start using me for service. And that's what also happens in meditation because sometimes we have this common complaint that, oh, I can't concentrate in meditation or I have a lot of wandering thoughts, waste thoughts, negative thoughts. So I think if we develop this habit of looking at my abundance in the consciousness what I have and sustaining that by not allowing negativity to seep in. It will help me in having a strong meditation experience as well. So there's an unspoken law. She said that when we take that extra mile for someone, they are not expecting anything in return. But that extra mile, that extra thing which we do for others is never forgotten because it has touched the heart. And also very important is, we have always been discussing that people don't remember uh, what you have done, but it is people do remember what you have made them feel like. So how can I make others feel special? That also helps a lot, reflecting on how abundant I am. She said, it's her quote, that it is a trend to be minimalistic that is economizing, but that should not take away from me the virtue of being generous. So let's not try to equate. Let's try to do for people abundantly as much as we can. But when it is minimalistic, it is basically economizing on my inner resources of my thoughts, particularly that I don't need to have waste thoughts. And also maybe words as well, where I need to speak minimal words, but make the people feel very comfortable. Let my cup be so overflowing. This photo is from Dr. Ashok Mehta. He had sent and Sister Pooja has incorporated in this. So it is only a cup which is overflowing is able to give. It will just spill off in the nature. So same thing is there. If I am so abundant, I can really overflow and give to others what I am full of. So let's take a few questions. Sister Claudia asked last time, how can we help people to get over the feeling of scarcity? So I think we just need to remind them that we have to trust in life, the trust and faith that all is happening for good. We have enough. Things will work. And the more I keep giving, the more I will keep getting. Because sometimes... This feeling of scarcity can limit your nature of giving to others. So let's not become a slave of such thoughts. Let's not have fears and insecurities. Let's keep giving and have trust and faith. The next question is, even when you have had very little about particularly Sister Aruna, when she had little resources, when she was establishing quite a few centers around the world, 
Sister Claudia, noticed that you were able to transform small into big. So what thoughts used to cross your mind at that time? So it was a very personal question for Sister Aruna. So she mentioned that just a feeling of wanting to give happiness to others was the thing which was sustaining her abundant consciousness. Serving doesn't really mean to do big, big things, but it means also to give happiness. And I get it reminds me of Dadi Janki her in the two days we are having her third ascension day. So, I mean, my thoughts are just going there again and again. She used to say that you really don't need to give happiness. You need to be happy and do things. So just be yourself in the sense, be happy and do things. You will radiate happiness automatically. The next question was, uh, Sister Claudia asked, we see people spending a lot just to get some love from others. And sometimes they spend more than what they can do just to gain acknowledgement or appreciation. And then later they complain, oh, that I have done a lot, I have done enough, and people don't even recognize that. And then they feel so depleted. So where did this abundance suddenly go? So how do we manage this? So a very apt answer she gave that some people know how to manage this, and it goes in a long way. So I think the brief answer here is that we need to really be generous and have a big heart despite whatever you have. And this is very common in India. I remember when we were very young, around 25, 30 years ago, when we were small kids. Though we live in a two-bedroom hall kitchen flat, you don't have a lot of space in your house. But at that time, 30 years ago, when we used to have relatives at home, we had a big heart and we used to welcome them with open arms and used to say, it's fine, you all can sleep on the floor and we'll have a mat, mattress, you can sleep on there. But nowadays it can be quite difficult. People live in big, big houses and they say, oh, we don't have room for you, sorry. So there you go. So the abundance is basically in our conscious, it's, it's there in our consciousness. And that's what Sister Aruna was trying to mention here. The next question was, what do you think about the financial situation during the war right now? And I'm sure all of you agree things will go in a different direction as we go further. And what do you think about abundance in this world where we are living right now? <clears throat> so she said that all of us live as a community and we have to understand that somebody may have something that others need. And to thrive, it is important to share. And it reminds me again here of our teachings at Brahma Kumaris, that we are taught that in future, you need to keep a stock of external things for at least six months because there'll be souls who will be very deprived of many external things. Not only external things, they won't have, say, money, food, etc. But they'll be also very peaceless. They'll be very, very unhappy, sad. So at that point of time, your abundance has to really serve them. And it's only that time I'll be tested that how much have I filled my apron with abundance. So I think with this, I'll just stop sharing. <clears throat> and I'm sure Brother Yogesh is with us. So if you can just uh, highlight him, Sister Anu. Yeah, so he's the co-host already. So welcome, Brother Yogesh. Thank you so much for joining. And before I pass it on to you, his video camera is on. He off, so he'll do it. He on it soon. Actually, we have been very uh, eagerly awaiting his presence because for some reason or the other, we were not able to get his dates. He was busy with some other seva and so on and so forth. So all of us know him very well. Basically, Brother Yogesh has been a personal development trainer and a workshop facilitator for more than 20 years now. And that's what I like about him, that all his talks are basically about facilitation. They are not about teaching. He basically is an Indian background, born in Africa, but brought up in the West, London and Oxford. And again, taken a lot of sustenance from Dadi Janki and Sister Jayanti as well. He really conducts a lot of talks, has many seminars and workshops to his credit. And as always, a poem for him and abundance together. Sorry, are we able to highlight him? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, so I think as I speak about the poem, the, high, the spotlight will come. Yeah, thanks. 
So the poem I start, Brother Yogesh is instrumental in serving the city of Istanbul, which is because he's indeed so wise and knowledgeful. Through his talks, he makes the hopeless feel hopeful because he helps them to experience the divine pull. Today, he shall share on how to have our aprons always full so that we are far away from the mighty Ravan's pull. I'm sure we're going to be away from that pull. By establishing our lost connection with the ever peaceful and blissful, let's make our life pleasurable, joyful, and cheerful. And finally, by encircling ourselves with the garment of spiritual wool, let's be safe from the attack of the devilish Maya bull. So thank you so much, Yogesh, for joining. Thank you. And we really are awaiting your presence since almost a year. You have to admit that. <laughs> thank you. Over to you. How can I follow that, Manoj Bhai? It's not fair. Yes. So, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you okay. If I can just request all the others to please mute. I'll just mute yourself. I think it was coming from here. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you for such a beautiful poem as always and I know you have another talk to do in half an hour so I wish you all success for that in advance and um, I was wondering you know what to say because so much has already been said about abundance and uh, probably I'll be repeating some of it from my own experience because the spiritual journey, although each one of us has our own individual spiritual journey, uh, but yet the discoveries we make along the path tend to be very similar. And uh, our teaching is also the same. And so um, one thing, of course, is that the way one interprets truth and experiences it is a little different. And I guess that's what makes it valuable to be able to listen to different people sharing uh, the experience of the same topic. So abundance is not a, a term that I have thought of much. And um, it's also not a term I think we discuss deeply in the spiritual journey, certainly in our spiritual university. Um, and I remember the first time hearing this word, uh, it was when I was at school, when I was a child at school, and um, to me, it, it really meant something like this. This is what abundance meant to me. And... Um, and then I began to understand that, okay, it's more than a, it's more than a dancing bun. But if you put the words together, then the, the meaning is, is quite deep. Um, and it was mentioned earlier also about uh, scarcity and certainly the fears and anxieties that many have today in the world. Um, in this part of the world, there is a free floating anxiety connected to hyperinflation, um, plus earthquake situation, and many other scenarios which are causing people to wonder, will I have enough? And will I be able to take care of myself and of my family? Now, one thing for sure is that the circumstances outside of us are beyond our control. But yet, it's also the case that uh, my inner circumstances are going to ultimately protect me and 
take care of me. And I think when one comes onto the spiritual path, you become aware of the spiritual universe, which is inside you. And you realize how that inner spiritual universe actually is then impacting the world or the universe outside of you. And so we begin to pay more attention to that inner universe and just learning how to live wisely, how to live spiritually. Now, in the world outside, there are certain models and certain dynamics of life that we are dropped into when we, as soon as we born, especially in the big cities. And uh, a large part of that is to do with chasing after something in life. It could be education, a certain job, a certain partner, a certain house. It's a life of chasing after. And we are also told that you need to get there quickly. You need to get there first because others may want to have the same thing as you. So be quick and push your way in and use your elbows if you have to. And once you get what you want, then you have to protect it because other people may try to steal it, take it away from you. And so that's pretty much sums up most people's lives today, where it's very much a fear-based or deficit-based lifestyle in which there's no real peace or no real sense of rest or calm. But I think as we enter into the spiritual understanding of life, we realize that there are other principles, laws, dynamics at work, which are causing things to happen. And we want to explore what those subtle, invisible, unmanifest dynamics are. We want to live in alignment and in accordance with them. And so one of the concepts connected to living a life of abundance is, as has been mentioned a few times, firstly, to check what kind of energies am I living my life with? And uh, the basis of abundance I have experienced and I have seen in some other great individuals is true generosity of heart, generosity of spirit. Now, in order to have a big heart or to have a generous heart, uh, first, I do need to have a clean heart. Now, what do we mean by a clean heart? So for this, we have to identify and define what is dirt, what is spiritual dirt, which creates limitations in the heart. Now, there are various, many multiple forms of spiritual dirt. But uh, in essence, I think they revolve around two main forms of dirt. One of them is the feeling of I, and the other is the feeling of mine. I and mine. Now, these two things, they create limitations in the heart and therefore also limitations in our relationships with each other and also with life in general. We can see how this operates on the global scale today, where this wonderful thing called planet Earth, with its waters, its land mass, with its air, has been cut and divided such that we say to people, you cannot fly your plane 
in my airspace or I will shoot it down. If, you, if your boat comes a few meters into my waters, I have the right to seize it or even sink it. And all of these borders, of course, have been created in the minds of human beings. I was listening to um, a scientist speaking recently and uh, he was saying what he'd really love to do is to take all the warring leaders of today into a spaceship and take them a quarter of a million miles into space and to ask them to look at the earth and say, now look at that. Can you see the borders? Can you see where your country starts and somebody else's country begins? Of course, from up there, it's all one. But we have to ask ourselves the same question on an individual level, that to what degree have I placed limits or borders within my own heart, especially when it comes to our relationships with other people? Can I express that energy of generosity in my relationships? And what does that mean? Again, to try not to uh, repeat what has been said uh, uh, last week or the week before, but I find one of the beautiful definitions of generosity in terms of spirituality is to not hold the mistakes, the errors, the weaknesses of others in my own heart. What happens when we remember the mistakes of others is then it's a kind of imprisonment of the other, placing another person in the prison of their past mistakes. And so what energy will that generate in my relationship with them? I will see the other in association with their past mistake. And when that person sees me, he or she will remember, ah, this person is thinking of me with my past mistake. And so we get locked in this toxic energy of remembering a misdemeanor or some kind of mistake or some kind of um, bad interaction between us. But what I have seen in the great yogis whom I've had the fortune of seeing for many years is they do not hold the mistake of another in their mind and in their heart. And this allows the heart to remain clean. And where there is cleanliness, then naturally this energy of generosity emerges. And generosity in relationships is this, that I want the best for you. I want you to be the best that you can be. I want to help in whatever way I can to enable the best version of you to emerge. Now, this has been remembered as uh, in various contexts as the Pygmalion effect. What you see in another person uh, can enable that person to, to become that. And so a generous heart is able to see the best potential in another and subtly and invisibly invite the other to also gravitate towards their own best potential. Now, quite naturally, if I am doing that for others, if I'm having that quality of energy in my relationships with others, then it is going to bounce back. It is going to rebound back to me in various forms. It's going to bring goodness and kindness from the other towards me. And hence, this energy, this pure energy of generosity and well-being is simply going to snowball and become bigger and bigger. And this is where the karmic equation comes into play. 
And that is if I am expressing the energy of a generous heart, then you may call it life or the universe or the principles of spirituality. They will tune in to that. And whatever I require will come to me. So a person who is uh, sincerely trying to live up to the highest values always has this quiet confidence that whatever I require, whatever I really need, it will be there at a moment of need. There will not be worry, anxiety, or uh, the stress of, I need this and will I have it, will I not have it? But there'll be a quiet confidence. At the right time, the right thing will turn up. And so in this context, let us observe which lifestyle I am following. Am I living what we may call as this outside-in lifestyle? And that is where I am chasing after things and my mind is preoccupied with resources, with people's behavior, uh, or being lost in the news. There is so much to be lost in in order to pull to myself so I feel good, I feel secure. Um, and that can only happen for a while because inside we have an inner need which cannot be fully satisfied from the outer world. But the opposite is the inside-out lifestyle. That is where I'm paying more attention to my thoughts to my attitudes, towards my vision, and just to the energy which I am generating and using in my relationship with life and with other people. And in the lifestyle of a, a yogi or a spiritual person, this is where our whole focus is. What is the quality of my attitude and my thoughts as I come into interaction with others, with life, with situations? Am I able to generate a high quality energy of well being and kindness towards others? I always say that the greatest investment and the greatest protection is in values, living up to the highest values that I can, ultimately there is nothing else that protects us. I'm reminded here of a little story I heard once, and it's a story of uh, a man who needed some help in his house for something. And there, there were three friends that he thought to call for help. And the first friend was living next door. So he asked him, he said, I need some help. Can you please come? And the person next door said, well, I'm sorry, but I have guests I'm not able to come. And so he said, okay, fine. And then the, the second friend lived at the end of the road. And so he called him and said, I need some help with something in my house. Can you please come? And the second friend at the end of the road said, well, I'd love to, but I have some work going on in my house. I need to be with the workers. So, sorry, not available. And he said, okay, fine. And then the third friend lived quite far away. He called him and said, can you please come? I need some help right now. And the third friend said, yes, I'll drop what I'm doing. I'm coming straight away. And so who are these three friends? And the meaning in the story is this, that when your time for departure comes, as of course it comes for everyone at some point or the other, then the first two friends, they can not go with you. The first friend is your own physical body. No matter how 
healthy you have been or how attractive you look or how old or young you are or even how well known you were but uh, your body cannot go with you you have to leave that behind when the time for departure comes second friend is your family and those who are closest to you in your life no matter how much you love them or they love you, how much time you spent with them, how many good times you've had with them, how well they know you, but at the time of departure, they cannot go with you. You have to leave them behind. But only the third friend goes with you. The third friend are the actions that you have done in your life. And if you have done good actions, if you have given happiness to others, if you have invested in values in your interactions, those actions, that level of karma is going to go with you into the next part of your journey. So in terms of abundance, we can think not only of our current existence, but also the existence beyond this one, the life beyond this one. What energies am I carrying in my life now, which are also going to come with me as time moves on? Now, having said this, there's another scene <laughs> coming to my mind now. I'll just quickly share this too. Um, this was some years ago when I was in uh, visiting in London, maybe about four, five years ago. And uh, I was at our main center there. Some of you may have been there. It's called Global Cooperation House, the main BK center in, in the UK. And I was just in our morning class. I was not doing the class. I was sitting and listening to uh, one of the sisters reading the lesson. And uh, maybe there were 40, 50 people seated in the room. And then one guy who was just in front of me, just, just slightly to the side, he, he died right there. And uh, I was the closest person to him. Um, and he was the kind of person who you'd never hear him speak unless he was speaking to you directly. You would never overhear him speaking to somebody else. So he's a very quiet person. And I just remember, um, you know, he had a, had a heart attack and officially the death was in the hospital a day or two later. But it seemed to me that, he, you know, he looked at me as he was passing it just seemed to me that the soul had left at that moment and then he was placed on the on the floor and the paramedics came and were working away uh, and so we were all asked to vacate the room but I remember as I was there and I was one of the people just helping to put him down on the floor um, this thought came to my mind without uh, consciously creating it, but just a thought came from the subconscious. And that thought was that one day everyone's time comes. Uh, one day my time will come as well. And what will I ask myself when that time comes? And the thoughts which just popped up into my mind were these, that in my life, um, how much happiness did I give? How much love did I share? How many smiles did I create? These were the thoughts coming to my mind. And I thought this is how I would measure how meaningful or how successful my life has been. It would be by these kinds of things. And so then it just made it more sharp for me to pay more attention 
that in my interactions, my daily, everyday interactions with people, you're passing somebody, you're saying hello to someone, you're entering a room, um, am I making that conscious effort to spread a little bit of happiness? Or am I just kind of neutral and doing my own thing? If I make that conscious effort, let me, let me share some happiness. Let me share some love. Let me give some respect. If I do that from a, a position of self-motivation, then instantly it's good for me. I begin to feel good. It's good for the other. Other people feel happy and smile and helps to put them also in a positive frame of mind. But also I find that these little, little interactions where I am consciously choosing to be generous hearted, the universe or life is watching and what I really need will come to me. There won't even be a question of abundance. Do I have enough? Do I not have enough? Those worries won't be there, but just there'll be the feeling life will deliver at the right time. I don't need to pay too much attention to that. All I have to pay is attention on what energies am I generating and am I using and sharing in my relationships, whether it's with people I know or people I don't know. You know, you may be at an airport check-in, you may be in a bus, anybody around you who you happen to have some interaction with, consider it to be a moment where you can distribute some happiness, some joy, something which makes another person's heart feel a bit more light. And I think that this is the automatic karmic machinery which then takes care of your needs. Let me add one more thing here. And this is about cooperation. And uh, I found that there are three different levels or three different types of cooperation and how this connects to generosity and abundance. The first is this. Let's say, for example, uh, you want to go out and it's raining and I have an umbrella and you ask me, can I borrow your umbrella? And I say, sure, please take it. That's called passive cooperation. You asked me, I said, sure, yes. Okay, we get one tick, one brownie point for that. Second scenario is called active cooperation. You want to go out, I have an umbrella, it's raining. Uh, I offer you my umbrella without being asked. I say, look, it's raining outside. Would you like to borrow my umbrella? Please take it. And you say, oh, cheers, thanks. That's, that's kind of you. So proactive cooperation. I do something good without needing even to be asked. So karmically, you get two ticks, two brownie points for that, maybe even three. But then there's the highest form of cooperation. And that I would describe as proactive cooperation. And that is where I see your need even before you realize you have a need. I offer to help you and you didn't even know you needed help. So in this context, maybe I look out for you and I check, ah, tomorrow it's gonna to be raining and this guy needs to go out. So let me prepare this umbrella. Let me help this way, telling you, look, you might need an umbrella tomorrow. You might need to live a bit earlier just letting you know in advance. And so that kind of action, which is very high quality karma, then brings a huge reward back. Many, many, many ticks, many brownie points. 
I think if we pay attention to having this kind of awareness, then naturally life is going to take care of you when you have needs. But to do that, to be able to do that, we do need to go beyond the limitations of I and mine. And that's where we need to work on this thing called soul consciousness. It's one thing to consider myself to be a soul. It's another thing to consider you to be a soul. But it's a third thing to actually live in that awareness. Practicing to live in that awareness so that the feeling of kinship, the feeling of brotherhood is generated and we're able to go beyond the ego-based identities which are currently ruling the world. And soul consciousness is a return journey back to innocence, back to truth. That's why we sometimes describe it also as an, an ongoing journey. So that's one thing, the power of the energy of generosity will take care of your needs and you'll always feel whatever you need is going to be there at the right time, at the right moment. Next thing I would add is then checking how I am spending my thought and verbal energy. And it's a law, of course, that if you uh, waste something, one day you will not have. If you do not value something, one day it will go away from you. So in this life, um, it's one thing to look at your resources in terms of money and so-called possessions and objects and so on. But on the internal level, which is our interest, uh, let's start firstly looking at our words. How am I spending my word energy? And uh, I would suggest uh, two things we can pay attention to here. One, as I think was mentioned earlier, is economizing with my word energy. So instead of saying a hundred words to someone about something, can I communicate the same thing in, let's say, 60 words? And if I'm able to do that, then the energy of 40 words is saved. And that saved energy is going to accumulate in the mind that accumulates as what we describe as shanti ki shakti, the power of silence, which is the basis of all other powers that a human being can have. Accumulating the power of silence by economizing with my words and also being more essenceful. Often a person will say, well, I don't have the inner strength to do such and such. I don't have the willpower to do X, Y, Z. I don't have the courage for so and so. But why? It's because the energy is being wasted in perhaps unnecessary speaking and unnecessary thinking. So can I be more essenceful? And can I be more economical? Think, for example, that if you want to buy some object, let's say you want to buy a jacket from some department store, you may shop around. You may go to three or four different shops to check the best price. You may even wait until the sales are on. And so you learn to economize with your money you wouldn't just go and spend uh, without thinking. The same way, the words that I choose to speak, 
let me think about what I want to say, when to say it, who to say it, how much to say. And so this is called building a, a spiritual budget in yourself and also learning to be more essenceful. It is the case that people who are more essenceful and more precise, generally other people listen to them more rather than somebody who simply goes into unnecessary details, long-winded stories about some event. And then bringing it up to the thought level. When we have waste thoughts or weak thoughts, they come at a very fast speed. And when we have these kinds of thoughts, we make lots and lots of plans to do things. I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do the other. But there may not be the strength to put those ideas into practice, simply because it's too many thoughts and they may not even be aligned to the situation I'm in. And then because of not being able to put those plans into practice, then there can be disheartenment, disillusionment, disenchantment, and some depression. So what to do? Make our thoughts powerful. Powerful thoughts are always few. Powerful thoughts come slowly, but powerful thoughts have much more impact and they become practical. How to make our thoughts powerful? For that, there is the need for spiritual study. And I think uh, the majority of you on, on this call are aware of the different studies that we do, the morning study, especially the importance of having some spiritual wisdom first thing in the morning. And uh, why is it important that before you start your day, before you check the news or the sports results or your texts, before doing all of that, first I need to reserve some time for my spiritual study. Let me read something, let me listen to some spiritual wisdom. Why first thing in the morning? So that through the day, I can be busy exploring it, researching it, studying it, thinking about it, churning it. It is by churning spiritual wisdom that our intellect gets power. And where there is power, then our thoughts and our ideas we are able to put into practice. For example, think of churning. Think of having a, a vat or a container full of water. And if you were to stir it with a let's say a large wooden spoon, what's the result? What do you get by churning a container of water? You just get tired, you get nothing else. But if you were to churn, for example, milk, then it changes into something. You may get butter from that. <laughs> Much the same way, if during the day I am just thinking about ordinary daily thoughts, then the mind just gets tired, nothing achieved. But if I'm thinking about and churning spiritual wisdom throughout the day, through that you get power. And that power then leads to insights, that power enables you to raise your consciousness, that power allows you not to take uh, criticisms or insults personally, but yet to be able to generate the highest values from within you. In other words, your conscious living goes to another level. The result of that, life and the universe says, well done, well done, 
I will provide you with what you require. Abundance comes naturally when we're able to live in that higher vein of consciousness. But to be able to get there, we need power. To have power, we need to do this work of spiritual study and meditation every morning. Hence, it becomes a lifestyle. Without power, all these ideas are simply theory and nice ideas, but nothing really changes. So for me, everything comes back to these two things, building a systematic meditation into life and consciously studying spiritual knowledge through which I'm actually able to change old habits and thought patterns. Just having a quick look at the thing there. So let me come then to one or two more things just to wrap up. And then we'll do a little meditation. So as um, uh, Dr. Manoj was mentioning earlier, it's around this time that uh, we are remembering um, our Dadi Janki, who was um, global head, administrative head of our university for a while. And she passed away almost exactly three years ago. So I'd just like to honor her by mentioning some of the things I observed in her with regard to abundance. And um, she had many, many talents, abilities, skills, and specialities, as many of you would know who met her. But one of the things that she was an absolute master at was really knowing how to use things in the best way possible. How to squeeze the maximum benefit out of every moment of time. She had this diamond intellect to be able to know that. And um, it is for this reason that she used to say, and she passed away at the age of 104, <laughs> she would say, people ask me, even journalists ask me, how come you've had such a long life? And she would say, I never wasted time. I never wasted money. And so karmically, if you waste time and money and energy, then naturally it goes away from you. But she would pay attention. And I saw that for 40 plus years that I knew her. Very particular on not wasting anything even physical resources, even objects, even food, um, anything should be used in the optimum way. And if I'm paying attention to that, then naturally, karmically, it will stay with me. If you value something, it grows. If you don't value something, it will wither away and disappear. But I noticed with her also, in terms of uh, relationships, you know, how she would invest in another person by making them aware of their potential, of their strengths, and, and believing in another person. And this, is, this creates abundance in relationships, that if with a clean heart, with a sincere heart, I want somebody to grow, I want somebody to realize their potential and I create opportunities for them to do that, they will grow and naturally, karmically, that uh, gratitude will then come back to the person who instigated that. So I saw in her this uh, tremendous energy of generosity and one of the ways that the generosity was visible is in this mantra, which we call as you first. The mantra of you first. When there is an opportunity for something from the heart, can I really say you first? And so she would do that. She would give opportunities to others in front of her. 
Now, if I'm chasing after something and I have the me first mentality, it makes the person into a miser. It creates these limitations in the heart. And so naturally, other people drift away when they see this act of selfishness that he wants for himself, he wants to hold it, bring it to himself. But when we practice this great mantra of you first, then naturally others themselves all also will say, okay, you say you first to me, I'll remember this, and I will say you first to you as well. And hence, life, the universe looks after you if you are deploying this, this dynamic in your life. So with regard to the, these dynamics, I'd just like to show you one more diagram. And um, I have shown this before. I think well worth visiting again. <laughs> so it summarizes a lot of um, really what we're trying to share here. So we have these three points, and there's three dots. And so let's start with the bottom left over here. And this represents the self. And across the other side, the second dot represents life. And so here is the dynamic that we are born into, or we are even pushed into, is go out there and get what you want from life. And that is using the principle or the energy of force. Go and get it and keep it. And where there is force, of course, there will always be some kind of resistance. There'll be some fear, some anxiety, some insecurity. Uh, this may also be described as the rat race. Now, the only problem is, even if you win the rat race, you are still a rat. It's just that you are king rat, that's all. <laughs> that's pretty much the world today. This energy of anxiety and forcing. The people who become spiritually aware, who realize there is more to life than simply acquiring, keeping and protecting, they link their minds with this third point here, which is the source, which we may call as the divine God, the benevolent energy, whatever word we wish to use. And if you link your mind with the source, if you make that source into your support, your foundation, then magical things begin to happen. One of those is that this higher energy of the source will begin to influence the life which is around you. And hey presto, abracadabra, life will begin to provide to you what you really deep down want. Deep down means not the selfish superfluous desires, but really the deep down desires of the heart. Life will begin to bring them to you. And it's a very different way of living. That is called using the dynamic of power, force versus power. And so I think it's a, it's a great way to see, to check the self. What am I using in my life? Am I using force? to get what I want, or am I using this divine energy of power? And um, in order to, to connect to the source so that life automatically brings to you and takes care of you what you really need, what is important is our yoga link with this source, the supreme. That's known as yoga connection, my mind connecting with the supreme source. And that has to be real. It has to be honest. It has to be deep and experiential. And that becomes the basis of our whole life. If I'm connected in a state of yoga, 
with the source and then I'm living my life with the highest values I can, life will take care of me and there'll be abundance. Sometimes it is said in this way that uh, a person who is a true yogi does not have to ask for sehayog, which means cooperation. Life automatically will cooperate with someone who is sincerely and genuinely connecting the mind to the source. And therefore, no hurry and no worry, just a quiet knowingness, a subtle confidence, what I require will come to me. Last thing coming to my mind is uh, the understanding of wealth, the different types of wealth that there are in the world. And um, it is said that the highest form of wealth is spiritual knowledge. Now, to have spiritual knowledge doesn't mean just to listen to lots of talks or, you know, check YouTube and binge watch self-development talks or read lots of books. But thinking of spiritual knowledge, churning it, applying it in my life, practicing it, sharing it, if that spiritual knowledge is swirling around, is circulating within my inner spiritual universe, it's the highest form of wealth. Also, if I'm sharing it, it's going to grow. And a person who has the highest form of wealth, automatically, the lower forms of wealth will come to that individual. It is said, Spiritual knowledge is the king of all wealth. And where the king goes, the subjects automatically follow. What are the subjects? Subjects are things made of the world, things made of the five elements, objects, possessions, uh, so-called daily requirements. If I am really honoring and living with spiritual knowledge in my awareness, I'm practicing it, I'm sharing it, and automatically those things will follow you. So all these different aspects are involved, I think, in abundance, conscious living, and also making this effort to really pay attention um, in my relationships, the kind of energies that I'm using. And I find that if you're doing that, then you'll be one happy bunny and you'll be a bun that dances and you'll experience a bun dance in your life. So let me stop there and just check in with, uh, with the facilitators. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Yogesh. Um, wonderful sharing. Uh, I know that every aspect you shared with us, um, would there be any practical step you would like to tell us to guard against our mind and intellect from stirring the water unnecessarily with unnecessary stuff, practical in the day? Any particular tip would you like to give? Well, you know, I, maybe I'll repeat what I said earlier, but really important to, to start the day with meditation and uh, some spiritual study. You know, I use this analogy of the three fingers, and I may have used this before, but, you know, when you start the day, then first finger, first connect with yourself. Engage with yourself first thing in the day. Just remember your true identity. I am a spiritual energy, I am a soul, I'm a peaceful soul, I am an, an actor in the grand theater of life. Then comes a second finger, which is the connection with the source. And you may think in this way, I am a child of the ocean of peace, I'm a child of the ocean of happiness, I'm a child of the ocean of love, and experience your personal and private connection with that source. 
then comes the third finger, which is then your duties, your responsibilities, your daily life. Mostly people forget the first two. They jump out of bed and immediately check the messages and start thinking about the day. So those two things first, and then sitting down somewhere and just reading some spiritual wisdom or listening to spiritual wisdom, and then make a program for yourself. Okay, today, today my focus will be, for example, patience. I'm going to think about patience today. What is patience? How to apply patience? In which situations do I need more patience in my life? How would my relationships upgrade if I was more patient? You know, give your intellect this homework for the day. Another day you take something else. It may be tolerance, it may be understanding. But if your intellect has this homework, then you're busy. Keep yourself busy in researching and churning spiritual wisdom. If you're busy, then there's no space for waste to enter. But if you're not busy, if the intellect is vacant, then waste thoughts enter the intellect and then, and then we become weak. Our thoughts become weak. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yes, thank you so much for really the summarized invoice for all of us. That gave homework and connect to the source. Thank you, brother. I'll now, uh, actually, Brother Manoj had to leave a bit early. Um, I will request Sister Claudia from Vancouver to give the word. Um, Shanti, good morning from here, from Vancouver. Good afternoon, probably for you. It is always a pleasure to have you with us. And I really we feel honored to have you with us because you feel, you talk in a very practical and easy way, very easy, as you are an easy yogi. So um, one thing that uh, quite a first struck me today is when you are talking about living the, with a generous heart. So when we live with a generous heart, we don't have to worry much or do not have any fear. And then you talk very nicely about the three types of cooperation. It's very nice to see the difference between one and the other one. And I can tell you one practical experience I have last night. And I was looking for something quite expensive and trying to decide to buy or not to buy. And it's needed, but uh, how much we really are going to use it? And so someone just phoned me and said, I'm going to give that for, to you for free. So <laughs> it was kind of a, I couldn't believe it also, like it was for three days, I was kind of juggling, do or not to do, do or not to do. And then that one came with a very good karma, generous heart, and not, not think about I and mine because she just I said no, but you need she said no, you need more. So so that is a real nice cooperation that we get in life. I think that so has to have lots of blessing because so good karma. She freed me from so much thought about all this and that. So it's very nice to see how you put the three kinds of different cooperation. Yeah, the one who don't need to ask, they just give. And the other one that sometimes we see, okay, do you need an umbrella? But so this is quite nice the way how it puts thank you very much was very practical. So we we talk about abundance and then abundance is yeah, it's right there when we try to live our life in the high living values. Thank you very much and nice to hear from you. Thank you, Sister Claudia. And uh, I know we are almost uh, time with uh, time we are there but I think we'll still take the last five minutes meditation with brother Yogesh but before that let me just do a quick announcement um, two things whoever are new if you want to share your contact info with us then please send to myself the host or sister Vidhi so that we can send the review material as well as uh, the program's update as well as the second one um, is what Manoj brother just uh, shared. That is the ASA online project by Janki Foundation. The launch is happening tomorrow, Sunday, 26th March, 
Um, that's 7.30 to 9 p.m. India time, 3 to 4.15 PST and 7 a.m. for our uh, West Coast. So please note, and in the chart, the uh, information is also there with the link and the timing. They share with all and join so that this is to bring awareness about this program that is available, um, that uplifts. It's a value-based program, uplifting. And the other one is the silence retreat that was planned just after 12 hours this weekend, has been rescheduled to Sunday, 9th April. That's the silence retreat on abundance, 8.30 a.m. for India time. And 8th April, Saturday evening, 8 p.m. for West Coast, U.S. Canada. Please note, our next session of Values for Life series is episode 62 on open-mindedness, fully soch in Hindi, for which we'll have dialogue between Brother Eric, uh, who is the National Coordinator of Brahma Kumaris in Canada, and Sister Gayatri, um, who is the representative of Brahma Kumaris to the UN. And she'll join us from uh, USA, um, New York. So please join us. It is on 1st of April, Saturday morning, 7.30 a.m. for West Coast and 8 p.m. India time. Also, we'll have the spiritual significance of Good Friday and Easter on 2nd April, Sunday morning, 7.30 a.m. for West Coast time, 8 p.m. India time. Please note, we'll have Sister Luciana, who is the National Coordinator of Brahma Kumaris from Brazil, take us through this spiritual significance. And our next workshop will be on open-mindedness after two weeks, Saturday, 8th of April, um, 7 a.m., same time, 7.30 p.m. India time. We'll have Sister Valerina, Valerine from Switzerland. So please join us. This is our beautiful calendar we always share. We will share. And uh, you can check out the workshop videos, um, including today's, on the playlist. That's omshanti.tk. Um, and yeah, check us out on our websites. That's vyasa.in and vancouver.brahmakumaris. Thank you everyone for being with us. And thank you, Brother Yogesh. And we'd love to, for you to take us through a meditation. Okay, so let's end off with a, a short meditation, a short reflection. It's good if you're able to have your back straight, your feet on the floor, if, if you're sitting in a chair. And I'll just offer a few suggested thoughts. And so as always, firstly, I reflect upon the question, of who am I? The outside world is one of noise and movement. And I have little control over the outside world. But the world inside is in my own hands. The world inside is the world of my thoughts, my feelings, my experiences. And inside this world, I can explore who Am I? Who am I behind the labels I wear? Who am I behind the roles I play in daily life? Who am I behind the masks I wear. So I come to the very essence of true 
identity. I, the soul, I, the living star, in the center of the forehead, and within I, this living star, are all my eternal treasures. There has always been a reservoir of peace inside me. There's always been joy, love, and strength inside me. Now I choose to emerge, to awaken these inner treasures once again, to experience the fullness of my being. And as I do so, I allow these treasures to emerge through me and into my outer world, in my relationships, in my interactions, in the way I see life. Doing so, I feel very secure, very safe, very strong, very stable, very serene. Let me carry these divine energies through every moment of my life. So much brother yogesh for the beautiful meditation experience and uh, this is our tradition and the request is there to take the photos um we want to keep this memory of being with you and abundance so everybody who'd like to have be in the picture please switch on your videos thank you everyone for being with us and uh, see you again next time. Thank you, Brother Yogesh. And thank you, everyone, for sharing your call. Thank you, Vishwa. Thank you.